Hello, this is This is Urgent Yesterday. Um, kia ora, my name is Rosemary Can, and I'm coming to you from Nipaluna, Hobart, down in Tassie, um, from the land of the Muanina people. Um, I'm going to be kicking us off today. Um, my monologue is called The Appointment and is about a young woman uh, sitting in a surgeon's office. Carison Juliet Michaels. 15. Not that I know of. No cancer or heart failure. Although my uncle was diabetic. Lost a couple of toes. You know, amputated. Bit of a limp. His own fault, my mother says. Self-regulation is vital. English, maths, art, physics. I'm not sure what I want to do. I mean, did you know what you wanted to be when you were my age? course. Sorry. Well, nothing badly enough to study for seven years for it. <laughs> Sorry. I suppose I feel nervous, a little unsure about the procedure. I know my mother, mum, thinks it's a good idea to take care of it. We have to have gentle hands. Spin, mummy, spin. You are a princess, and daddy is a prince, and I am a frog. Ribbit. <laughs> I want to get married when I am big. Your dress is so pretty. White like snow. I love you, mummy. Perfect princess. Perfect dress. I want to touch. Just once, press my hand to the dress. So soft. Blue ink where I touch. I pull my hand away. Gentle hands. Gentle hands. Sorry. Wipe it away. Worse now. Everywhere. All blue. Spreading. Everywhere. Everything blue. Mummy is loud now. I'll clean it. I'm trying. Stop. Stop it. It's growing and growing. Everywhere. Blue. Mummy is grabbing. Too tight around my wrists, Mummy. It hurts. Please, Mummy, I'm sorry. It's all wrong. I made it all wrong. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I am bad. I am sorry. I am mucky. I made it all wrong. I, I am crying. I look down. My hands. Blue ink. It's all over. Where did it come from, Mummy? From... I can't breathe. My tummy hurts like I swallowed a big sharp rock. From me? No. No, no, no. Not from me. No, no, no. No blue from me, Mummy. Mummy, say it's not from me. Please? I have damaged some things. I suppose it's probably a good idea to sort it out. Not people, no. Never. I am sitting up very straight. Harley is too small and is slipping down in his chair. I don't slip because I am big now. There is white paper in front of us. Harley is giggling and putting his hand on my hand. His hand is very little and he is not strong like me, but I pretend that he is to make him feel better because it is hard to be little and not strong yet. I let him pull my pointer finger across the paper and press it down hard. Blue ink is brushing from my fingertip and spilling onto the white sheet. Harley is pushing my finger toward me in a wide semicircle, like a half moon, a grin, captured. I am pushing my thumb down to mark two eyes. Harley smiles and I am magic. I am magic. Funny Harley, my funny brother. My skin stretches as my smile widens to bursting. It feels like I am smiling for weeks. Blood roars through my chest and I have so much love in me, it feels like I'll explode. I am glad now of the trickle of my ink from my fingerprints to let some of the pressure out. Mostly good things. I mean, I've never hurt anyone with it. Everyone's fine. Stained anyone. Only me. Only my things. God, why isn't it coming out? I'm crouching in my laundry, stained underwear in my hands. 
I try to scrub the blue ink from the white cotton. There are white beads of stain remover sodden with blue caked under my fingernails. I use too much. I'm always too much of everything. I manage to draw some colour from the fabric, but most of it stays there, mocking me. I'm too careless. <laughs> and each time I'm careless, there's another secret. Secrets hold us at a distance in this house. Even if I'm silent, even if I hide every hint of a glimpse of a sign, Mum will still be able to tell. To tell what I've done. What I've done to myself. Just another item on the long list of things I shouldn't touch. I haven't, I'm not sexually active, no. Can I ask the procedure? Is it going to hurt? Of course it's gonna hurt. Nothing about electro cauterization says fun and easy. I am excited to get rid of my gloves, to, to not have to worry. In summer it gets so hot, always having them on. I get eczema and the sweat. It's really sore. But the fresh air, I mean, wow. It just, it just feels amazing. But I always end up, I always end up making a mess. Sorry, off topic. I want the procedure, I do. <laughs> I'm nervous, I guess. That's normal. Not a typical situation, but I'm not typical, am I? I want to be better. Yes, please. It would be nice to know exactly how it works. The device will move slowly over and across each fingertip, precise and unfeeling. The metal is so cold right now as I mind the procedure, but during it will be so hot that it will sear the skin shut. The heat might feel like ice in the surrounding areas of flesh. Our brains can have trouble distinguishing extreme temperatures. I will have a local anaesthetic injected at my wrist. I won't feel a thing. What a relief to know. I won't feel anything at all. Not the heat, not the pain. I won't feel the flesh melting or knitting itself back together. I won't feel the ink rushing out of each of my fingertips ever again. Won't feel Harley's hair when he skinned his knee and I'm holding him to me. Won't feel the silk of my dress for the year 12 formal. Won't feel my lover's skin when I map their form with my fingertips. Won't feel a thing. Won't feel. I can't do this. I absolutely can't do this. I'm sorry. I. This appointment is over. This whole... It's over now. Thank you very much. That uh, concludes my monologue, the appointment. And next up, we have the wonderful Lily. Thank you. Hi. Um, okay, I'm Lily and this is my monologue. This is yours. Just stop. You'll be on your own. Don't. Put that back. Enough. Bye. I won't miss you. No one will. Why don't you just stay here with me? We can do all the things we used to do. And what about our spot? What if some degenerate angsty teen wanker comes and graffitis it who's going to chase them off you won't you could pretend to go we could make it up tell everyone a lie photoshop the pictures because that's all it's for right because for other people to think you're amazing i'm right aren't i that spot oh man it's so good it's like the only place where my brain goes quiet, but it doesn't really go quiet because it's always zipping through thoughts. Have you ever tried to think about nothing at all? You can't. Try it now. Oh, please, close your eyes. Focus on your breath. But see, 
You're not not thinking. You're thinking of your breath. It's making a pattern in, out, in, out. That spot on the top of the hill in Kayama with the bit where you look down to the left and you see the skate park. Mitchell Graham is so hot. Then you look to the right and it's the whole ocean. And your brain sort of goes blank, but not really blank. I think about how I'm on the very edge of the country. And if I zoomed out on Google Earth or on a globe or something, that on the very edge of Australia, I'd be sitting there, like dangling my legs off the edge, like those roller coasters that drop. So you can't go because you won't be on the edge of the country anymore. You'll be on the edge of another country, but it might not feel the same. Sure, it'll have a coast and a beach and like most likely a skate park, but what if you die? Mitchell Graham won't be there to give you ciggies. If you stay five more minutes, I'll give you $200. You will make money over there though. I mean, you will be doing exactly what you've always dreamed of doing. They say that big dreams are for big people and you've always felt bigger than here. But I thought we'd be here together. But whatever. Okay, what if as soon as you get off the plane and drive to the hotel, you get a phone call. It's your agent telling you to come into the office right away. You go. You sit in the waiting room wondering what this agent is going to look like. That's the best thing about phone relationships is waiting to see what they look like in real life. You go into their office and it looks just like it does in the movies and they slam a chunky contract in front of you. And as soon as you sign your name in blood, everything is yours. Everything you've hungered for. You'll probably wipe one of your tears from the page when it falls from your nose. And you'll laugh and say something self-aware like, oh, I'm so pathetic and keep signing. And you'll call. I'll give you $100 a day each day you stay. Don't be a fucking shithead. Don't go. Don't have a dream. That's so selfish. Not everyone gets to go after what they want to do in life. Why can't you be like that? Why can't you just be smaller? Just be nothing. It'll be easy. You won't ever be unhappy or stress. It'll work out just fine. I hope you get shot in America. Then you'll know what it's like. Then you know that oh, then you'll know that it was a bad idea to leave. And your traitorous blood will splatter out of a gigantic ugly hole in your head onto the floor of some organic vegan coffee place. And I won't even speak at your funeral. So wanky of you to even want to go there. I bet you'll get an Apple Watch and pay for all your things by tapping it onto the FCOS machines, like lattes. Ugh. And you'll be 30 drinking those feral lattes and talking about contracts and babies and boring husbands. And you'll forget about the things you used to like, like Florence and the machine. And, 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 and the smell of... Your teeth will go yellow. And they will fall out of your head because you'll be doing cocaine and acid and drinking to wake up. You're going to get wrinkles. You're going to try and look like Jennifer Aniston, but you won't ever. You will never look like her. Even if you have a really good personal trainer and eat like a fucking rabbit because that's all you are. You're a fucking rabbit just wanting to root anything that isn't here. You want to make love to someplace else. It's fucking disgusting. It's so selfish. This is yours. Don't leave me in this shithole with all the needles and creepy men. And who is going to clean up your pink vomit and take you to the chemist when you need the morning after pill after you had sex in a car with Mitchell Graham? And who will put aloe vera on your peeling sunburn? And, and, and the sweat after sleeping on leather couches or sticky car seats, the body odor smell at 6 a.m., the cider belly burps, the nose grease after chips and potato scallops, the salty air and salty snot, bruises from bikes, kissing, dancing, raging, laughing. You're going to miss out on all of that. 
I'm going to miss that. Are you nearly done packing? Are you going to pack our jumper? I don't want it. Take it. Take it with you so you can smell me whenever you feel lonely. If you don't make it, you can always come back. Just don't forget to bring me back a present. That's it. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to hand over to Danielle. Hello, uh, my name is Danielle. I am coming to you live from Darwin in the NT on Larrakia land. Um, and I have my monologue for you. I need gourmet. Um, we find Rhea in a state of post euphoria on her sister's bed. <clears throat> hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Your bed? Oh yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> I just had a sandwich, my first ultimate sandwich and it was a bit of a mess clearly <laughs> but I can explain so I was walking home from school today and passed by the deli which had this cute server boy out the front holding samples of cheese he sees me and he shoves this cheese in my face so I pop it in my mouth without thinking and bam like my legs just crumble and as I fall to the floor he drops the tray and tries to steady me and my eyes fill with this like white light and it feels like death and I have this this primal urge and all I want to do is scoff down more cheese and I get my vision back for a moment and I see the tray boy with this look of absolute terror on his face and I feel like I should care but I don't all I care about is getting this cheese into me again and so he's leading me inside to make sure I'm okay and the smell of cheese again wham and you know how small this deli is and there's nowhere for smells to escape. So it just keeps building on top of itself and I'm still reeling from outside. So if I stay here much longer, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. But Trebo is gone to get help out the back and sitting on the counter, I see the original block of cheese that the sample was cut from and I grab it and run the whole way home. This is my chance to create the ultimate sandwich. So I call out to see if anybody else is here. No one. Silence. Yes! But I have to be quick. So first things first, hide the cheese. I bring it in here and it's just sitting on my bed, staring at me. And all I can think is, yes, I want you too, again. And I've got this sandwich idea too. And you know how um, how mum brought home leftovers from the fancy work party the other night? Yeah, cheap, I know. But that stuff is sandwich worthy. And I launched myself out of the room into the kitchen and I'm stumbling all over the place into chairs in the corner of the tables and then I'm down on all fours crawling and when I get to the tiles I know I'm in the kitchen but my legs my legs are weak but my arms are still functioning so I reach out and pull on the fridge handle hoping the whole thing doesn't fly open and have everything fall and bury me that's not the way I die if death by food is how I go it'll be because of, I indulge in gourmet products not being crushed under two-day-old pasta base. And I see it lit up on the top shelf, paper thin prosciutto folded onto itself and bright green pesto. This is a good start, but I need bread to make it a sandwich. And all we've got is 99 cent white crab. Now, sandwiches are very personal. So you have to try different things to see what you like. For me, I need gourmet. And the only thing I can think that we have in that's you know, expensive enough is the Rosella jam from Christmas that we didn't use. And I know it's somewhere in the pantry, but we've got all of this crappy tin food, which I start just like hauling onto the floor behind me. And then I see it, this small blue lidded jar. And so I'm headed back to our room, arms full, and I can hear keys at the front door. And I turn on the spot and I start to run, but a can of tuna rolls under my foot and I lose my balance crashing to the floor for the second time today and losing everything. The jam glass shatters and splinters the paste inside. The prosciutto spread across the floor, gathering dirt and the pesto splattered all over the wall. My life is ruined. My dream gone. So I sit there in a pool of food and wait. But there's nothing until I hear the door close next door and Bria sigh the relief. I take another deep breath and the cheese smell fills my nose and I am reborn. 
and I'm running on adrenaline now, pure untapped adrenaline. I grab my keys and head out the door. And it's like I'm possessed. I can feel the wind on my face as I'm out the front door and I find myself headed back to the deli, back where all of this began and back out the front door with more cheese. Trey boy. But I don't have time for chit chat. So I just yell, I want the most expensive thing you sell. He drops the tray again and rushes inside and he's gathering the best bits in the cabinet. My stomach is growling. Prosciutto's bag. But before it can even reach the bench, it's in my hand. He's wasting time. So I bark again. I want that and that and that. It's coming out of me in violent bursts. Hurry up! And this is the part where I'm supposed to pay. But instead, I run. Adrenaline sets in, my legs are pumping. It seems as though I just blink and I'm here again, sitting on my bed with everything laid out. I reach the smallest packet, paper thin. I close my eyes and bite. It explodes. Not the same way the cheese did, but just as powerfully. The savory juices run down the back of my throat and I'm feeling weak again. So I grab the bed to steady myself and reach for the next bag. I'm carefully removing the lid so I don't stain my bed. And I slip two fingers gently into the pot. I swirl them around for a bit and then stroke the little black olives. They're slippery and I don't want to drop them. So I lean back and open my mouth. A little gasp escape. And as I do, I drop one in. And I never want this day to end. The third and final bag contains the most important part, the bread. A warm, soft, fresh loaf of sourdough. The kind that has just a hint of crust on the outside and it's soft and squishy in the middle. Oh, that adrenaline. My brain is aching, churning out a million thoughts a minute. But all I want is to focus on just how amazing these things will taste in combination. But it looked wrong. Everything was just ruled out. My bed was a mess, but yours wasn't. I grabbed a clean towel to lay it out just in case. See? Then I finally, finally have it all together and I'm ready. It's kind of surprising that I haven't lost my interest in it yet. I mean, I've heard of that thing happening before. You get excited, but then the other factors kind of kill the mood, but not for me. Okay, okay, breathe. Oh, I just want to shove my hands in and tear the sourdough apart, stuff the cheese and prosciutto in and drizzle it with olives and the oil. But it's my first time and I want to soak in every moment. I grab the dough in both hands and gently feel. And it's got this, this slight crack in the crust that I can just pull the seams open. But I don't want to force it. I don't need to. I run my fingers up and down each side, slowly pressing as I go to find any give. The marks on the outside curve around like smiles. And that's where I find the delicate part to split. Yes, this was a good choice. And as I'm peeling the two halves apart, I use my thumb to stroke the inside. Prosciutto next, definitely. Thin, light prosciutto. I reach into the bag and remove a single piece. Just one to start. You can always add more. I place it on the soft face and slowly lay it out in its line, which looks great, but feels dry. Like not an uncomfortable dry, but I decide to take it off. I'll start from a different point. I see the pot of olives swimming in their oil. As much as a dry sandwich wasn't appealing, I don't want it to be a swamp mess. And I feel the bread again, letting it do the talking, asking what it wants. Should I? Could I? Yes. Into the olive oil, I dunk the prosciutto and I use it to paint the surface of the bread until the juices are visible. Oh, oh yes. The sandwich and I are developing an unspoken bond now. Another? I don't deny it. I am now just a cog in the sandwich making machine. It is the master and I just listen. Another and another. Three. Three on the first layer. But I know prosciutto. It means something else. An upgrade. Three pieces of prosciutto and an olive. Do I dare? Why not? It's my sandwich and I can always take it out later. Yes. Three slices of prosciutto. Now two olives. A drizzle more of the oil to keep it moist. I can't rush this. As much as I know adding the cheddar will be enough to push this over the edge, I need to breathe. Deep breath. Really take in everything I'm creating right now. 
I want to remember every moment of this from every angle. So I position the sandwich so I can see it in the mirror on the wall over there. Yes, you are beautiful, aren't you? It looks like mine. It is mine. And now it's time. Time for the cheese. Oh, the thing that started it all. I crumble the block so just a few crumbs stick to my fingers and I grab the other half of the loaf and gently pat the cheese tips into it right near the top. Don't overindulge, I tell myself. You know this works. And of course I'm right. I've practiced with cheeses before and this cheddar is definitely more powerful. I'm so nervous. My hands are shaking. This could be it. The moment I make my ultimate sandwich. There's a silence in the air as I bring the base and the top of the sandwich together in one swift motion. They touch. God almighty, this is the most beautiful thing I have ever done. My first ultimate sandwich here made with my own two hands and it's perfect. Better than perfect. It's in my mouth. It is in my mouth. My tongue meets the bread and everything else inside and every taste bud is on fire. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide now. Each taste bud is active, salty, sweet, sour, bitter, all working overtime. I use both hands and shovel more and more into my mouth and it is good. No, better than good, but it needs more, more cheese another prosciutto, one more olive. Yes, yes, yes. I tease my taste buds over and over and over again until I can't anymore. And I just, I fall down. My vision gone, my arm weak, my legs have given way. And if this is how I die, I will not complain. Don't worry, Gab, I'll clean this up eventually, but I'm not sorry. Thank you very much for joining us for This Was Urgent Yesterday.